This is a story called I Can't Take It Anymore The Fingers Beneath My Door Submitted by Mike Rich 15 Please help me I don't know what to do You probably won't believe me I don't think I would believe me if I was removed from the situation You have to be in it, you know You have to see it the first time it happened was like any other day. The sun rose, seconds and minutes and hours passed by as I sat at the desk in my apartment, clicking away on the keyboard. I ate. The sun sank. A modicum of happiness sprang into my heart when my shift ended, and I settled into the groove of my couch for the remainder of the night. I tried not to look around at the stark apartment, tried not to too long for more. More space, more furniture, more voices filling the rooms than my own when I talked to Siri. I knew that if I allowed myself to wallow, to sink into the abyss of my isolation, I would never crawl out again. So I turned up the volume of my television, basking in the echopism of society's projected images. The television was so loud that I don't know how long they were there. I only remember a sensing a distortion in my peripheral, but I ignored it at first. I dismissed it as fatigue. Click. 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 When I heard it during a silent movement in the program I was watching, I was unable to cover myself with a veil of ignorance any longer. I turned my head to the door that led out to the hallway, and there they were, sticking out through the crack between the door and the tilted entrance. A set of human fingers, waving at me, its nails hitting against the door. No. Not waving. That's not right. It was more like a rolling wave of fingers. A beckoning. I couldn't see a palm or a wrist or even a thumb. Just four fingers pulsating beneath the door. I couldn't move. I sat on my couch, knees shaking, sweat forming. I could hear myself screaming inside my head, willing me to spring up from my seat and approach the door. But my heart was pumping cement into my limbs. I managed to croak out a set of words. A question. Who... Who's there? The fingers stopped, just sat there for what seemed like an eternity. Fingers wide apart as if frozen. Then in a flash, they went back out from underneath the door into the hallway. The sudden movement broke my trance as I sprang up from the couch and ran to the door. I turned the handle and yanked it open. I threw my head into the hallway, but there was no one there. I breathed out a sigh of, wo of what? Relief? Maybe. If it was relief, it wasn't content relief. It was more like the relief of narrowly missing an oncoming car as your car swerved into the opposite lane. I wanted to step out to go knock on my neighbor's doors and ask if they saw or heard anything. I wanted to run to the end of the hall to the stairway leading out to the building to outside where I surely would see some kid running away laughing with his friends, savoring the bravery of following through with a youthful dare. But of course, I did none of those things. When the adrenaline drained away, I retreated back into, into, into the safety of my home, because nothing could get me there. Right? The next morning felt surreal. I tried harder to remember what had happened. The more my memories felt like they were trapped in a whirlpool, I stared at the hallway door for a long time that morning trying to piece together what I remembered. What color skin were did those fingers have? Did they have long nails? Were they a man or a woman? Did it even happen? That last thought scared me more 
than anything sticking out from underneath a door, if I couldn't trust my memories. I, choose, I chose to move on, kids acting on a dare, I decided. That was the most logical thing. What else could I do but hang on to the sol solidity of logic? I sat down to another day. The sun rose hours passed by in the haze as I tried to type away on my keyboard. I tried to eat, but could barely, but could barely stomach more than a few mouthfuls. The sun went away, its warming glow extinguished for another day. The television bloomed to life as I sat down on my couch, despite my attempts to retain some sense of normalcy. My eyes couldn't help themselves. They kept darting back to the door, to the crack beneath it. In my head, it wasn't fingers that came through the crack, but instead a whole arm. It expanded, stretched, slithered up the door and to the handle. Before I could stop it, the door opened and I couldn't close my eyes to the horror standing in the hallway. I closed my eyes and counted to ten, an old trick to calm myself down from such thoughts. When I opened them, I only saw a door, and this time my sigh of relief was one of content. Hours of passively watching the television went by until I could stay awake no longer. I killed the images with my with the remote, stood up and walked into the bathroom. I closed the door, not really thinking about the absurdity of wanting privacy in an apartment with no one but me in it. Some habits, I think, are so deeply ingrained that to break them requires a level of concentration. I was not capable of that at the point. After washing up, I buried my head in my hands, trying to will away the ache that, that had sprouted and taken root in the back of my brain. It was pulsating pain, coming at me in waves, each crest bringing a fresh dose of stinging hurt. Flashes of images pursed into my head, a long finger curling upwards, a decaying fingernail being ripped away, rotting skin falling off, and revealing the bones of ghostly knuckles. Click. 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 I froze. My, be my breath, my breathing quickened. Short, shallow breaths pushing out of my mouth. Click. Click. I had to look, even though I knew that that what I would see. I removed my hands away from my face and looked to the bathroom door. To the crack beneath, and there they were. Pointed nails hooking towards the door, hitting the wood. Click. 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 As I sat there, I heard someone else breathing long wheezes like stale air breathing pushed out of an air mattress. Someone was behind the door in my apartment, my home. Something was the intru intrusiveness of it all. The idea that this person would enter my space and encroach upon what was mine? I brewed a boiling anger within me. I screamed at the door, at the thing behind it, and wrenched it open. Nothing. No one. Just empty space and the fear that now inhabited it. On every level, this was worse than finding the devil itself standing in my living room. Were those demons? Really, in my head after all? I tried to sleep, but it proved to be an elusive partner, dancing and weaving around me. I kept the door to my bedroom open all night, 
If I could see, I would have left the hallway door open. But my paranoia of a real person coming outweighed the fear of the demons that had clearly infested my brain. The next day, the sun rose, but I didn't get out of bed. I didn't eat, the sun fell away, and I hadn't left my bed. I thought that if I didn't see them, no fingers would be there. I almost convinced myself that this was the truth. But somewhere deep within, I knew something was happening on a level I couldn't comprehend. Logic told me I was experiencing a withdrawal so complete that I could no longer discern from reality and the fiction my mind had created. But what kept my eyes open on the crack beneath the door? What really scared me was the notion that I was sane after all. If my mind was truly broken, that's something I could come to terms with. If, however, the plane separating us from whatever lurks beneath the surface had really been penetrated, then I was standing on the precipice of a giant's mouth, a gust of wind away from falling in and beneath and being swallowed up. Logic took over me when days passed and nothing happened. I returned to a sense of normalcy. I managed to sleep, the sun rose again, I found my appetite, I even thought that maybe I would leave my home and go out into the world, interact with actual people. I went to bed last night with some hope coursing through my body. Still underneath it all, I kept the door open. Before I closed my eyes, I waited for it, for the click of fingernails hitting the door. Seconds ticked away, then minutes, I was almost asleep. Click, click, click. No, it couldn't be. The door was open. The door was open. I turned on the lamp beside me, and for a brief second I saw them. Fingers, pointed nails curled around the bottom of my bed. Click, click, click. I knew I should have gotten out of bed. I knew I should have confronted what was there. And it either way, but I couldn't. I threw my blanket over my head, willed it to go away. Click, click, click. Go away! Click, click, click.